good morning students welcome back to the class today we are going to discuss regarding multi threading models thread libraries and what are the issues that we are going to face in thread libraries these are the th uh, concepts uh, today we are going to uh, discuss fine so first what do you mean by uh, a thread like as we have seen in the earlier classes a thread is nothing but a small portion of a program fine so like we will be going to have uh, many things like uh, you will be going to have uh, many processes in each process like we used to have uh, many number of instructions so in order to have the uh, uh, less complexity of the instructions we are going to divide the process into threads so for example uh, like if you are going to take any of the process so when we are going to see uh, uh, different threads like uh, what we'll be going to do is like you will be going to have uh, uh, suppose this is a process this is a process p suppose this process is going to have uh, like uh, 100 number of instructions this pro process is containing 100 number of instructions so in order to execute this process it will be going to take much amount of time so what we have uh, done is like in this uh, 100 uh, processes we have divided into five threads so each thread is going to have 25 instructions fine so that what it will be going to do like we are going to reduce the complexity of the program like uh, instead of executing 100 instructions at a time what we are going to do is we are going to in execute 25 instructions these are totally 100 instructions instead of executing 100 instructions at a time what we have done is in order to make it simple we have divided into small small parts thus each part we call it as a thread and we have seen this before fine so what are uh, this is the thread so uh, like uh, in a combined system like multiple processes within a same application so uh, if you say this is one application so here we are going to have multiple threads so multiple process multiple threads will run in the same application on a multiprocessor system so if here if any of the thread is blocked if any of the suppose this first thread is blocked if any of the thread is blocked it is not going to affect the remaining threads so that is the flexibility we'll be going to have in a threads suppose if you are going to execute a processor if anything happens in this processor like uh, anything happens in this program so the entire program is going to be halted but when it comes to the thread if we have divided that entire program into five different threads so if in, we are having any problem in the first thread so only that is going to be affected remaining four threads will be going to work normally so that is the benefit we are going to have in the threads so that is the how we will be going to have advantage over a thread over a process like we have seen the advantages differences between the thread over a process like you just check out uh, the previous classes video so that you will be going to have the recollection of the data fine so today we will be going to discuss regarding the multi threading models so how many models are there basically there are three different types of multi threading models the first one is many to many relationship second one is many to one relationship and the third one is one to one relationship so these are the different multi threading models we are we are going to have we'll be going to see one by one fine first one is the many to many model so many to many model as the name itself indicates the many to many model multiplexes any number of user threads into or equal or smaller number of kernel threads as we have seen like you will be going to have the user uh, user space as well as the kernel space so if it is a user space if it is uh, like i'll be show you the diagram so this is the user space and this is the kernel space so in user space we are having two processes p1 and p2 and process p1 has been divided into three threads and process p2 has been divided into three threads fine many to many models in the sense like what it is going to have is how many threads we are going to have in the user level 
uh, those many threads will be going to have in the kernel level. See here, uh, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So, each thread in the user level is going to be mapped with each thread in the kernel level. So, this is how you will be going to have uh, this uh, many to many model. So, that is the advantage of many to many model, fine. So, when we are going to take a many to many model, you will be going to have many threads in the user space and many threads, any, uh, how many, suppose uh, here in the user space, we are having six threads. In the kernel also, you will be going to have a th six threads. So, many threads in the user space are going to be mapped with the many threads in the kernel space. So, that is the many to many model. So, here in the diagram, like as we have seen, we had a six user level threads and we had a six kernel level threads. So, developers can create as many user threads and as many kernel threads. There is no restriction that like a user threads only these many and kernel threads only these many. There is no particular sort of restriction. User can create any number of threads and kernel create any number of threads. So many threads in the user level are going to be mapped with the many threads in the kernel level. So this model provides a best accuracy and concurrency. So accuracy means like it will be going to have the accurate concurrency means a parallel execution. When a thread performs a blocking system call, the kernel schedule another thread for execution. So this is the major advantage you will be going to find. So if a thread, um, if a thread uh, uh, forms, if a thread is going to have a uh, any fault in the sense the kernel is going to schedule another thread over here. So that is the thing why we are going to have many to many model. And next one is the many to one model. As the name itself indicates, you will be going to have uh, many in the user level and one thread in the kernel level. So many user level threads are going to be mapped with one kernel level thread. So here is the diagram that is going to show uh, this many to one model like you will be going to have many user level threads as we have seen here we are going to have six user level threads and uh, six user level threads and only ka one kernel level thread so why it is so in the sense here this process p1 is going to have three threads but here this is going to be mapped with only one thread in the kernel here process p2 is having three threads but it is going to map only one thread with the kernel so we'll be going to have a drawback and we'll be going to have the uh, processing speed is going to be low why because if first thread is executing over here second and third thread has to wait and if second thread is executing first and third threads has to wait so only one thread can execute at a time so this is the many to one mo model so you will be going to have many user level threads and only one kernel level thread so this is how many to one model so here thread management is done in the user space by the thread libraries so by making use of that thread library thread management is going to be done when a thread makes a blocking system call the entire process will be blocked this is the drawback you will be going to face in the many to one model but when it comes to the many to many model like we if any one of the system is blocked by making use of the remaining we are going to do the work but here if one thread makes a blocking system call the entire process will be blocked why because here in process p1 three threads are there but only one is executing currently if suppose if this thread is blocked so we can't do the remaining one and three so this is the drawback you will be going to have in the many to one model and next one is the one to one model so here one user level thread is going to be mapped with one kernel level thread so many to many in the sense many user level threads can be mapped with many kernel level threads here one to one in the sense only one thread in the user should mapped with one thread in the kernel 
सो वी हियर देर इज अ स्पेसिफिकेशन दैट ओनली वन शुड बी मैपड विथ वन बट वेन इट कम्स टू द मेनी टू मेनी मेनी थ्रेड्स आर गोइंग टू बी मैपड विथ द मेनी कर्नल लेवल थ्रेड्स सो इन दिस वन टू वन वन रिलेशन इज वेरी मच एक्यूरेट सो दिस मॉडल प्रोवाइड्स मोर कॉन्करेंसी दैन मेनी टू वन मॉडल इट अलाउज अनदर थ्रेड टू रन एन ए थ्रेड मैक्स अ ब्लॉकिंग सिस्टम कॉल एज वी हैव सीन इन द मेनी टू मेनी इफ वन थ्रेड हैज बीन ब्लॉक दिस वी कैन क्रिएट अनदर थ्रेड सो दैट इट इज गोइंग टू बी एग्जीक्यूटेड इट सपोर्ट्स मल्टी थ्रेड टू एग्जीक्यूट इन पैरल ऑन मल्टी प्रोसेसर सो दिस इज द वन टू वन मॉडल सी हियर हियर इन दिस प्रोसेस वी आर गोइंग टू हैव ओनली वन प्रोसेसर थ्रेड यूजर स्पेस एंड दैट इज गोइंग टू बी मैपड विद द कर्नल लेवल थ्रेड इन प्रोसेस टू वन इज गोइंग टू बी मैपड विद वन बट वेन इट कम्स टू द मेनी टू मेनी लाइक हियर दैट इज नॉट द केस हियर मेनी थ्रेड्स आर देर एंड हियर मेनी कर्नल लेवल थ्रेड्स आर देर सो मेनी and many when it comes to the one to one model like only one thread will be there and one that will be mapped to the kernel space here we can provide more accuracy so this is how the different models of multi threaded models have been divided so when it is going to have um when it is going to have a multi threading models so that what will be going to do is uh, all the threads are going to be executed in parallel so that which is going to have so that is how many one thread is go one thread in the user level is going to be mapped with the one thread in the kernel level so these are the different models you are going to have in uh, like a multi threaded models so what do you mean by a thread and what are the benefits we are going to have a thread over a process and what are the difference between thread and a process what are the different multi level threading uh, what are the multi level threading models all the things we have seen and next one of the important and concept uh, like what we are going to have is the thread libraries so what do you mean by a library so when we are going to uh, write a c program we include hash include stdio.h right so we include stdio.h so uh, here when we are going to include this stdio.h so what it is going to happen is uh, like we are going to use uh, stdio.h when we are going to include stdio.h in the sense we can make use of printf and scanf is it not so here what i mean to say is like a uh, like a here we used to have a, a library so if it is a library this we call it as a library fine so in the library we have written uh, a code for printf so printf code we have written this is in library but when we have uh, written a c program hash include std io dot h fine uh, next what we have done is we have some uh, printf hello so this is the program so what we are going to do is here we are directly using the printf statement suppose if the libraries are not there what we have to do is we have to write the code for printf first we have to write the code for printf and then we have to use that printf code in order to print the hello statement but what we are doing here we are not writing the code for printf why because is libraries what we are having is going to have the code of the printf just what we are going to make use of printf we are going to make use of and scanf we are going to make use of but we are not writing any code for the printf and scanf so that is the purpose of libraries so in libraries we used to have the inbuilt functions we are going to make use of those functions instead of writing all the entire code so here in this also thread libraries means thread libraries provides the programmer with an api 
this is api means application program interface for creating and managing the threads so in order to create and create the threads and in order to manage the threads we need to have a thread libraries without thread libraries we are not going to create a thread or we are not going to manage the thread so there are two primary ways of implementing this thread library so as we have seen before like used we used to have user level and the kernel level right so first approach is to provide a library entirely in the user space so first approach is we used to provide this thread library entirely in the user space and we are not making use of kernel over here so that is the a uh, first method of implementing the thread library here entirely in the user space with no kernel support so here we in this user space only we used to provide all the code all the data structures all the libraries all we are going to place in the user space only so as all are there in the user space we need to have a function call in order to call any one of the library a function call is required so a function call is enough no need of system call so system call in the sense if it is uh, uh, placed elsewhere we are going to make a system call but all the things are there in the user space only just we need to make a function call so that we will be going to calling that function and we can use that thing so that is the uh, first approach so what do you mean like in order to uh, utilize or in order to implement the thread libraries we are having two primary approaches the first approach is like user level so first approach is we are providing a library entirely in the user space and we are not at all involving the kernel in the um, first approach so whatever the code whatever the data whatever the things are there we are all just dumping in the user space only so in order to call any one of the library just a function call is needed in order to use any one of the thing but no need of making the system call so that is how here see now uh, this means that invoking a function in the library results in a local function call local function call is enough in the user space and not a system call system call means if in, if that functions are available in any other system then we are more going to make a system call if it is available within the system a function call is required so that is the first approach but when it comes to the second approach to implement a kernel library supported directly by the os here we are going to make use of kernel library which is going to be supported by the operating system so in this case the code the data structures everything will be going to available in the kernel space only so if we want to invoke a function in the api for that library we have to make a system call but not a function call so here results in a system call here in uh, you first approach we have make use of a function call and in the second approach we have make use of a system call and in the first approach whatever the data whatever the code whatever the thread libraries are there we are just placing all that in the user space only in the second approach we all placed in the kernel space only so in order to uh, invoke a function on the api a system call is going to be required so this is how the thread libraries are going to be invoked by making use of an application program interface in order to manage the threads or in order to uh, create a threads this is how thread libraries are going to have next one is there are three different uh, threads we are thread libraries we are having so these are the major th different thread libraries as we all know we call as a p threads p in the sense posix so p threads we normally call as p threads like in java we used to have familiar with p threads what do you mean by a p in the sense p in the sense posix threads so p threads the threads extension of posix standard may be provided as a user 
level or a kernel level library. So it is not specifically meant for the user library or not specifically meant for the kernel library. For both user libraries as well as the kernel libraries, we are going to make use of this pthreads. And next, another type of thread is like uh, Win32. Win32 in the sense Windows32. So it is a kernel level thread library. We can't use it on the user level thread library is fine. So Win32 is another thread library in which we are going to have this library is a kernel level library available on the Windows system. And last one is the Java threads. So these Java thread uh, API, what it is going to do is it allows the thread creation and management directly in the Java programs. So that is how the importance of the Java threads are going to be. So here, uh, most instance JVM is running on the top of the host. Without that JVM software, Java virtual machine software, like we'll be going to not to run the threads. So these are the three different thread libraries we are going to have. The first one is the P threads, second one is the Win32 threads, and third one is the Java. What do you mean by a P thread? P in the sense POSIX threads. These threads are not are meant both for the user level as well as the kernel level library provided as either a user or a kernel level library. But when it comes to the Windows 32, it is specifically for kernel level library only. When it is a Java threads, it allows the creation and management of the programs by making an API. Fine. That is how the thread libraries, uh, the three major thread libraries are going to have. And next one is the thread issues, multi-threading issues. So what are the different multi-threading issues we are going to face? Or else what are the different multi-threading issues we are going to have? The first and the foremost thing is thread cancellation. So here we are going to have uh, different threads, right? Uh, we'll be going, this is the process P1. In this process P1, we are going to have three threads. Thread cancellation is a major issue. Why in the sense? Thread cancellation means terminating of a thread. Cancellation in the sense terminating of a thread before it is finished working. So it has not completely done its work, but still we are terminating that thread. So thread cancellation is a major uh, issue. Why? Because here we are going to have three threads. In this, if you are going to terminate one thread, like how, uh, how we are going to face an issue. So in this thread cancellation, we are going to have two different cancellations, asynchronous cancellation and deferred cancellation. What do you mean by asynchronous cancellation in the sense? Asynchronous in the sense we are letting this thread to finish its work. So we are letting this thread to finish its work. When the work is completed, then only we are going to cancel the thread. So that is the asynchronous cancellation. When it comes to the deferred cancellation, deferred cancellation in the sense, uh, uh, sorry, asynchronous in the sense, we are uh, letting uh, this thread out of the process before completing its work, before, before letting finish its work. We are not, like as we have seen uh, in the before, like uh, mm, when we are going to see a process, like uh, if two processes are executing, if a first process is executing by the CPU and a second processor arrives, if that second process is having the highest priority, what we are going to do? We are removing that first process and we are allocating the second process to execute in the same manner. So asynchronous cancellation in the sense which terminates the target thread immediately. So even though if it completed its work or not, we don't bother, but we will be going to cancel th thread. So that is the asynchronous can cancellation. Deferred cancellation in the sense we are going to allow the target thread to complete its work. So we are allowing the thread to complete its work and it has to exit out individually by itself. So we are not letting the thread forcibly stopping, we are letting the thread to, uh, to stop uh, by itself. So that is the deferred cancellation. So 
this is how a thread cancellation is become a major issue so here if uh, if i if i said uh, to cancel one thread if i cancel to uh, uh, cancel a thread in the sense which thread we will be going to cancel so that is a question mark so that is how we will be going to have a problem with the threads cancellation if it is a process in the sense if process p1 process p2 process 3 p3 in the sense in order if i said uh, cancel the process p1 in the sense the whole p1 process is going to be cancelled but when this p1 has been divided into three threads t1 t2 and t3 so if i am cancelling the p1 process all these threads are going to be cancelled but i don't want uh, all the threads to be cancelled so this is how it become an issue when it comes to the thread cancellation and the second issue is signal handling <coughs> see how a signal handling is going to be a problem signals in the sense in order to do some task we will be going to send some signal right we are going to do some sig signal and we will be going to invoke a particular task or we will be going to delete a particular task. So, signals are going to use to notify a process uh, to do a particular event. Fine. So, in a multi-threading process, uh, if uh, suppose uh, this is a multi-threading, so multi-threading means many threads are there. So, this is a process. So, signal handling is difficult in multi-threading. How in the sense? Now, in a multi-threading process, if this process receives a signal uh, to which thread it must be delivered, so that is a problem over the signal handling. So, we are having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 threads over here. So, in uh, this is the multi-threading. So, if I sent a signal to create or to halt the process in the sense, this halt is applicable to which thread? to first, second, third or fourth. So, it is a confusion. So, signal threading is also a major issue in the threading. And next one is the fork system call. So, what do you mean by a fork? What do you mean by a fork system call in the Unix? In the sense, a fork is used to create a new process. We will be going to make use of fork system call. Suppose we are having the process P1. If this P1 process uses a fork system call, a P2 process is going to be created. Here, what we have to uh, notice is the P2 process will possess or will exhibit all the properties of P1. So, whatever the P1 properties are having, as it is a parent, like when P1 make uses of a fork system call, it creates a P2 process. But you have to remember that P1 process executes whatever the process properties that P1 is going to have, all these properties are applicable for the P2 also that you have to remember. So, now, the problem with this multi-threading process is if one thread fork, will entire process be copied or only one? So, here, how we will be going to get a problem in the sense? So, this is the P1 process, right? So, P1 process initiates a fork system call. So, what happened? P2 process created. Fine. P1 process initiated a fork system call. So, fork system call in the sense like it is going to create a copy of a P1 process. So, here how, how this is going to be a difficult in the sense P1 is having four threads. Like, like here it is a problem that all four threads have to be copied or any one of the thread has to be copied. So, that is a big a major issue in the fork system call. So, this is also one of the issue in the uh, threading and last one is the security issues because as there is a, sh a security issue because of extensive sharing of resources this is the major one between the multiple threads as the resources are being sharing between uh, different uh, threads uh, we will be going to have the security issues so these are the different issues we will be going to face so what uh, how what is the problem we are going to face in the fork in the sense Fork means we will be going to create a copy of a process. If P1 process uh, has uh, 
initiated a fork system call in the sense P2 process will create with the same properties. Like how, like P1 is having four threads. All the four threads have to be copied or any of the single thread has to be copied. That is a dilemma. Signal handling in the sense thread contains many threads, process contains many threads. If any signal has been sent in the sense, if which to which thread this signal is applicable, so that is also a big headache. And um, the thread cancellation in the sense fully it has to halt in the middle or it has to make the thread to con uh, to conclude fully. So this uh, that is also another problem. So these are the different issues we'll be going to have in the threadings. So thread libraries means the major three thread libraries are what are that like you will be going to have P threads, Windows 32 and Java and uh, what are the different multi threading models in the sense many to many one to one and many to one many to many in the sense many user level threads are going to be mapped with many kernel level threads one to one in the sense only one thread in the user is going to be mapped with only one thread in the kernel many one to many in the sense many to one in the sense it's like you will be going to have many threads in the user and that is going to be mapped with the one thread in the kernel so this is how you will be going to have a different multi threading models in this Mm, uh, threads. So this uh, completes your uh, session and uh, in the next class we will be going to see uh, regarding like uh, what are the uh, regarding uh, different processes we will be going to start. Fine. Thank you students. Thank you all for being here.